Today on The Breakfast, the International Monetary Fund IMF urges the giant of Africa to put an end to energy subsidy, increase revenue and increase tax bracket and compliance. Also on The Breakfast, we'll be talking sports this morning with a sports analyst. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday morning and it's good to know that you are on the other side of the divide. Uh, we always start off our conversation with what it's making the rounds in different, you know, spaces and that would include social media. My name is Messi Ibopo. We'll start off with the fact that the Nigerian military had raided Medugri underage brothel uh, in uh, Medugri, that's in Borno State's capital, shutting down the brothel that followed an exclusive report on Saturday, exposing illegal activities at the brothel. The military raided the place uh, two days ago and arrested some people. The, th this is actually very saddening if you ask me, if you can see the picture uh, to that effect, you can see that this is a young person. But you see having brothels and illegal sports across different parts of the country is an activity that's going on. And I feel like this is, you know, a big call on everyone in the society, you know, to be uh, part of this uh, raid okay so yes it's very commendable that this has been exposed but there are a lot across uh, different parts and it might just also interest you to note that these things don't just happen outside of the space I mean they don't happen without the help of people most times you find out that our mothers our aunties our uncles our brothers sisters friends I mean a lot of persons are involved in all of this illegality and we cannot say. Sometimes you also have, you know, brothels or factories or spaces where people have, uh, <clears throat> they just have young girls who would probably be making babies and then they use the babies for whatever reason. Uh, but this is one out of so many. It's quite commendable of this and we pray that those who are uh, involved in this act will be made to face the wrath of the law. And away from that, uh, it's about an Italian volleyball star that died after uh, the game. An 18-year-old Italian football player of Nigerian descent died after falling from a hotel window just hours of her team eliminated from the Champions League semi-final. Uh, Julia Ituma was discovered dead at her hotel and in Istanbul, Turkey on Thursday morning. That was uh, yesterday following her team's loss. According to the report, Ituma was discovered motionless on the ground alongside uh, the volleyball or the Valley Hotel at around 5.30 uh, a.m. on Thursday. She was pronounced dead shortly after paramedics and emergency responders arrived at the scene. Local police confirmed that investigation was uh, ongoing into the incident. Uh, her body was later sent for forensic examination in order to determine the cause of uh, the tragic death. Well, that's what it is. Uh, it's a good thing that forensic examination is going on. Uh, it's also important that, you know, the authorities find out exactly what would have been responsible for her death. Uh, but you see the narrative that's been put out. It's also possible that, hey, uh, the fact that you have a team that was playing and then they, were, they didn't make it, you know, to the semifinals uh, for the game, that could have also been a trigger. Uh, but we can't for sure say exactly what is the cause of her death. Uh, whether, you know, it is what it is, maybe she committed suicide, what could have been responsible. Uh, we leave that to the authorities of, you know, Turkey to go ahead and find out. But it, it, it's something that's quite interesting because, I mean, it concerns a human being. And secondly, a Nigerian is involved or a Nigerian decent is also involved. And that's why I guess a lot of Nigerians are talking about it. But on the other hand, it's important that maybe we probably just have to get to a point where we um, have to have a in our curriculum, we'll probably have to have special courses that people need to be able to handle failure and rejection and all of that. This is part of life. And so at a time that you're not able, uh, because honestly speaking, you probably might just have a lot of people who can handle failure and a different outcome. So yes, you probably have plans. It didn't turn out the way you expected. 
what else do you do? The pressure might just be so much. But it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's just one out of so many. There will be other opportunities. And uh, we need to also know that, hey, hope is what it is. Uh, if that's the case, we can't for sure say. There's no need to begin to say what is not. But that's a sad and unfortunate incident. Uh, she looked very promising, had a bright future. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's see what the authorities will say about that. Now, next on our top trending is that a notorious internet fraud star, Ola Lekon, uh, Jacob Ponley, who is also known as Woodbury, has entered a plea of guilt with uh, the United States Authority, agreeing to surrender $8 million in proceeds of wired fund, that's Yahoo Yahoo, as well as you know luxury cars and watches to foreign government. Uh, you might also interest you to note that uh, Jacob was arrested in Dubai on June the 10th, 2020, alongside Ramon Hoshpopi Abbas who is currently serving an 11-year sentence for a similar fraud charge. Uh, Woodbury loved to flaunt his lavish lifestyle on Instagram. Had, you know, <clears throat> he had to plead not guilty to the eight-count fraud charges brought against him for engaging in a scheme known as business email compromise. And uh, <clears throat> a plea declaration submitted at the United States District Court of Northern Districts uh, in Eastern Division in the United States on April the 6th revealed that Woodbury had everything and is now pleading guilty to uh, a one count of the indictment and what have you. So according to this plea agreement, he was required to repay like $8 million he fraudulently received from seven companies that fell for his scam. Uh, it's a good thing that he's having a rethink. It just shows that his human, his conscience is now alive to what he has done. Uh, you know, sometimes when people act in certain way, you ask, there's usually this statement where people say, how do you sleep at night? And so for these persons who are, you know, involved, we understand the pressure, you know, whether it is the pressure that you're mounting on yourself or the pressure that is mounted on you via, uh, peer, you know, your peers or the family, society, friends, and what have you. But <clears throat> sometimes there's always this question where we ask, how do you sleep at night? Knowing that you have you know, defrauded people of their hard-earned, you know, money. It's, it's very saddening. And one thing that you probably would want to take out of this is the fact that, hey, this is quite commendable, that he's having a rethink and he's, he's decided to enter into that uh, a plea deal, uh, also hoping that he, will, he would make a restitution or, you know, return some of this uh, earnings and stuff that he's gotten via illegal means, uh, we can do better as a people, honestly. We understand that it's not a perfect world. It's not a perfect society. We understand the pressure that's there from all the quarters. We understand the fact that um, people would probably want to <laughs> judge you based on your worth and how much resources that you have and all of the designer stuffs that you wear and all of that. But that shouldn't be the case. And in most cases, a lot of people find themselves trying to do, you know, go overboard, engage in crime and criminality. That's not it. Um, I must say that it's, it's a good thing that he had a rethink and uh, he could probably pass for restitution. But that's the size of, of it this morning on our top trending. We'll just take a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking through the front pages of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press, where G.D. Johnson will be joining the conversation. Please stay with us. Good morning. <laughs> 